Okay, so I've got the radio ready to open up on the bottom. I've not pulled out any of the tubes or anything like that. Um, in the uh, writer's manual I found for this, they talk about how to remove the speaker, but I'm not going to do that if I don't have to. Hence the microfiber towel that's laying here. I figure if I can avoid removing the speaker, I will. I put the radio on something soft, that way I don't damage the speaker any more than I already have, which as of right now it doesn't appear to have been damaged at all. So I went through and I found the right wrench. Uh, it's a quarter inch socket. So I'm going to remove As clean as this radio is, I'm kind of wondering if it hasn't already been worked on. I've been watching videos on things like recapping. Um, one of the biggest things that was talked about is when you first turn the radio on, if you hear a, and you have the volume all the way down, if you hear a humming noise, that it's the this this filter cap right up here. So they recommend recapping that for sure. Uh, they recommend recapping it anyways, just because of the fact that you've got these uh, all these that are melted. All these paper caps in here like this one this one here definitely is gonna have to get redone so it's the original capacitors original re re uh, resistors everything's original in it let me tilt it up a little bit so the order in which I'm going to do things First thing I'm going to do is figure out where the leads go on this, which one of these is positive and negative, and then I'm going to get a polarized cord and I'm going to put it on. That way that's done. Um, then I'll start working on the capacitors and go from there. Another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this chassis up, try to get all the writing off of it, get it at least somewhat shined up, maybe try and get the plastic on the dial cleaned up. Um, typically I use something like Brasso to do this part of the chassis, but we'll see. Uh, I'm going to clean up the case itself. And then I have to figure out what I'm going to do with the antenna inside. Uh, the problem with the antenna inside the case is the magnetic speaker wire that connects it to the radio chassis broke. Every one of them snapped. So there's uh, two wires, one that goes to each tap on the antenna, and they connect up to where these wires were soldered on the wires were broke so I have to replace them or I'm gonna have to wire in an external antenna neither of which is really appealing but we'll figure it out from there all right so you can see I've got a lot of work ahead of me um, typically if you watch the 
videos that I've watched, like Mr. Carlson's Lab uh, and others who have restored these radios, they will replace these resistors, they'll replace the capacitors, they'll replace everything. Initially, I'm just going to replace the, the uh, paper capacitors, and I'm going to go from there. I will put links in the bottom of this video to the sites where I'm getting my parts from. Uh, I bought my tubes from the Electronic Parts Guru. He's a person that used to come to our ham fests. I've bought tubes from Tubes Antique Electronics Play also. Uh, capacitors I'm probably going to get from JustRadios.com. Tube Depot is another one. TubeDepot.com is another good source. Uh, Just Radios has complete kits that are designed for these radios, which is why I'm looking at him. And uh, different things. Dial cord, uh, the power cord I'm going to get from Antique Electronic Supply. Uh, you know, I'll get various pieces from various places in the end. So... All right, with that, I'm going to stop this video and get going.